Welcome. My name is Brian Kaplan, editor of The Banker. I'm here with Philip Alexander, the senior editor, and we're previewing the special edition of The Banker for the IMF annual meetings, which are in Lima, Peru, in October. And Philip, I mean, we've got all the usual things in the IMF edition. We've got an interview with Christine Lagarde, the managing director of the IMF, and a whole range of viewpoints from finance ministers. But one of the interesting things we've also got is a bank safety ranking, and it's the first time we've ever done one. Why did The Banker decide to do a bank safety ranking? Well, Brian, of course, every July we produce the top 1,000 World Bank's ranking, but that's just ranked by size, essentially the size of the Tier 1 capital. As we know, that doesn't necessarily mean a bank is safe. In fact, during the financial crisis, some of the largest banks in the world were the ones that got into trouble. So what we've done is we've taken the 250 largest banks in the world, so the ones that are most significant in terms of financial stability uh, and also have the most data available on them, and we've ranked them according to a series of indicators that we think reflect the safety of the bank. Okay, now, I mean, it's pretty complex business, isn't it? I mean, ranking bank, bank safety. So what sorts of indicators have we used? So we looked at the capital ratio, how well capitalized they are, but we've also looked at profitability, sustain, you know, whether that's sustained. Um, we've looked at asset quality, how many bad loans they have. We've looked at how they fund themselves. Are they more or less dependent on wholesale funding, which, as we know from the crisis, can dry up? Um, all of that information comes from the banker database. We've also pulled in one set of numbers from beyond the banker database, which is we wanted to look at the, the operating environment for the bank. So obviously, even the best run bank in the world, if you're operating in a conflict zone, things could go wrong. So for that, we've taken the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. They have country risk classifications, which are designed to tell you the risk of really of its, its export credit to those countries. So it looks at the kind of things. OK, uh, uh, which types of banks have, have come out well in this ranking? Um, well, first of all, uh, some more specialized banks have done well because of the business model. So, for instance, we've got banks that are essentially asset managers with a banking license or custodian banks that look yeah. after clients. So they don't assets. have lending risk. Yeah. Exactly. Um, in terms of universal banks, uh, one bank in the United States noticeably came out very well, which is Wells Fargo. Um, they've been profitable for quite a while. They've also got a much higher capital ratio than a lot of other big American banks. In terms of regions, the region that really did quite well was the Gulf states, and in particular Saudi Arabia. A lot of Saudi banks came high up the ranking. They've had good profitability. Also, they're very well capitalized. Okay. All right. So are we, this is the first time. Are we going to carry on and do it in, in next year? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, from what we've seen, it's, a, it's an interesting ranking, and we think there are also some enhancements we can make. We learn as we go along. Um, we're hoping to get a bit more data, and, and in particular being able to stretch some of the data back over a long time period so we can tell with things like profitability, not just recent, but do they have a track record of maintaining that kind of profitability over time? Okay, thank you very much. We'll look forward to the September issue of The Banker.